Okay, so now I'm going to introduce structs to you. So structs, or structures for short, are kind of, well, structs is short for structures. They're kind of halfway between enumerations and classes. So we saw that enumerations basically just contain a bunch of values, whereas classes can contain properties and functions. However, in enumerations, these values are kind of, they're, they're put into cases, and the values that we give each case, that's going to be the final value. With classes, we can just create a bunch of variables that are going to be the properties, and then functions. However, with structs, they're kind of halfway between that, in that we can create some variables, similar to in classes, but they cannot contain any functions. So in that way, they're kind of like enumerations. So we'll see that they're actually very useful in kind of creating these objects, uh, these structs, and yeah, we'll be able to do some cool stuff with them, like access uh, the properties, change them around, and initialize new instances of them. Okay, so now we've seen enumerations and classes, let's talk about structs. So structs, I guess, are kind of halfway between an enumeration and a class, in that they can, structs can define properties, but not functions. So classes could have properties and functions. Structs are just kind of properties, but they're also variable. So it, it's kind of like an enumeration in that way, but enumerations have defined, have cases with defined values, whereas structs have variables. So these are just going to be regular variables. You know, it could be of type string, double, int, uh, float, or characters, boolean, stuff like that. Okay, so at the very end, we'll kind of compare the three side by side, so it becomes the differences become a little clearer because they're kind of subtle sometimes. So let's go ahead and create a new instance. So we'll call struct, and this is short for structure. And let's use the example of a bank account. And so we'll set that up. And again, so there, there are no functions within the struct, there are only properties. So what could pro what kind of properties could a bank account have? Well, a bank account could have, let's say there is a an owner, and this is going to be of type string, because it's going to be the name, and I'm just going to set it to an optional variable because we don't want to initialize it to have a value yet, and we could create a variable that's an ID, and this is going to be an int, and then we could have another variable that's going to be the current balance and that's going to be you know what let's set the current balance equal to zero right now okay so we can either choose to initialize these or not I could have left this as an optional variable if I so desired but I'm gonna set it equal to zero because let's say every bank account that's opened doesn't yet have an owner, it doesn't yet have an ID, but it will have a balance of zero right off the bat, okay? So the way we create a new instance of a bank account is fairly similar to creating a new class. So what we can do, and there are two ways to do this. We can create a variable, and the reason I create a variable is so that we can change the properties later. So we could have this variable, and let's call this my first account. And uh, this is just going to be a bank account. And actually, I should capitalize this because structs, classes, and enumeration should all be capitalized. So it's going to be bank account, and there we go. So now we've created a new bank account structure called my first account. Right now, its owner is nil, its ID is nil, and its balance is zero. And if we want to verify any of those, we can say my first account dot owner and wait for the value to pop up here. We get nil and my first account dot ID and then my first account dot balance. And we should get nil, nil and zero. There we go, and we do. Okay, so now we've created this account with basically nothing in it. But right now we so we've created an account but we want it now to contain some values. Okay. So because it's nil, nil, and zero initialized in the struct. Those are the default values, but now we can give it some values. So we could say my first account owner is, let's have my name, and maybe our ID is just, you know, some random digits. And the balance, let's say I add in 
you know, $500 right off the bat. Okay, so now this creates this uh, balance equals zero. So I guess I should say type double There we go. Okay. So if we didn't give it this type, the error I was getting there was because I said it's zero, so it's always going to be zero. But if we give it a type, that means it can contain any number, it's just its current value is zero. Okay? So in this way it's just kind of we're just changing the properties of my account. So now we can call my first account dot owner and we should get Nimish, which is my name, and there we go. So we could do that for all, for the other three properties. I'm not going to demonstrate. So that's one way to create a new instance. Now the second way, and this is a little different from a class, unless we have a constructor within a class, but that's that's something different. That's a different topic. We can create a, another account. So my second account. In fact, let's call this my business account and it's a new bank account but instead of leaving these parameters blank we can actually fill them in now this is unique to structs and this is basically just saying that there are these properties so we can choose to initialize them right away or we can just initialize the bank account and then define them later so if we do this it right away defines the values so let's just say this is mammoth interactive interactive oh this is yeah this is really annoying me all these errors and stuff okay so and then we'll have the ID just be you know some other number and then the balance let's have let's say we have ten thousand dollars in here okay so now we've created another instance of a business or a bank account this one's called business account and right away we've assigned it to have some values so if we were to then call my business account dot owner and then my business account dot ID and then my business account dot balance we would have values right away so while it runs it will it will display the values after it runs and there we go so we have a name an ID and a number or a balance right away and that's because we once we created this particular bank account we initialized it to have some values okay so we can kind of do the same thing with classes but again we'd need to initialize we need to implement what we call a constructor and that allows us to do kind of the same thing so in that way we could kind of initialize a bank account with this information as a class but with as a struct it just kind of gives us this option automatically okay so in fact you can almost think about a constructor as a type of struct so it's kind of like a struct within a class itself all right so yeah this is a struct we've created a blank struct and reassigned some values we've created a struct with the values already initialized now let me show you one other thing and then we're gonna go on to our last video which is gonna be putting it all together so what we'll have is we will have a so my my business account is already set up to contain these values or actually let's take a look at my first account so it has these values right now and then let's have my second account well we'll create a variable my second account equals my first account okay so now this is created well, this has created basically a duplicate of my first account. So we created this struct, first of all, my first account, and now we created this second account, which is basically going to automatically create another struct with everything equal to whatever my first account's information is. So if we go my second account, dot balance, we should have, and here we go, come on, let's go. There we go, we should have 500 popping up there. And that's because my second account has just created a duplicate struct with the same properties. So what we can do is we can then modify this. So let's say my second account balance is, you know, $1,500. 
Now this has changed the balance of my second account, but not my first account. So then if we go my second account dot balance and look at my first account dot balance, we'll see that the second account balance is 1500, but the first account balance hasn't changed. It's only 500 still. Okay, and that's because rather than creating the same thing and reassigning both values, we've just created a second struct and we're changing the properties only of my second account and not my first account. Okay, so in that way you can duplicate structs pretty easily. And yeah, so this is pretty much it on the intro to structs. Just a brief summary. This is what a struct looks like, short for structure, and it's kind of between an enumeration and a class in that the enumeration kind of has this a, bit, a more similar structure where it has the enum and then the name and then it has a bunch of cases with values in them whereas structs have instead of cases with values it has a bunch of variables or constants if you want so we could create a constant and just not have it you know have it not be, ever be able to change but the difference between structs and classes is that classes don't contain any or structs cannot contain any functions they can only have properties okay so that's structs for you we looked at the examples of some bank accounts so we looked at in initializing one that was just blank and then filling in the values later then we looked at one that was that we filled in the values right away and we could also change them here if we want like I could change the owner or the ID or the balance later on if I choose to but I'm just gonna leave it as blank and then the last thing we saw was that we could create another variable and assign it to be equal to a struct and that just duplicates that struct and passes it the current values of the struct which we can then modify without changing the first instance of the structure okay so that's structs for you this next part we'll be looking at classes and structures together it will just be a little shorter but I'll show you that the two go hand in hand very nicely okay so in this part I introduce structs to you so structs were kind of kind of like classes in that we create new instances of them and this just creates a brand new struct with the properties defined as in the structure definition so we use the example of a bank account where we gave it basically a nil a user and a nil ID and then the balance of zero so then you can create a bank account either with parameters or without so this means that we can create a new bank account instance with the parameters filled in so give it a specific name and ID and balance or we can just create a new instance with nothing and it will just give it these default values then we saw we can set and reset values as well and in this way it's different from enumerations in that enumerations have those values set and that just means that each enumeration can only take on one of those values whereas struct is creating an entirely new object or an instance with these properties that we can then manipulate 